Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at issues behind the news. There have been a few more signs this month that the energy transition is starting to have a real impact in South Africa, with the refinery closure, moves by municipalities to buy their own power, and a new report on solar jobs. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi oh, Snow. First, Engine has taken the big decision to shut down its Durban refinery. Yes, this is a, a major decision. You know, over the years we've been talking about our fuel quality and our standards here not really meeting what the automotive industry needs. And there have been attempts to move up uh, to highest levels of fuel quality, but the cost recovery mechanism has never really been settled. So these refineries are reluctant to move and build uh, either new refineries or uh, uh, upgrades to the existing refineries to produce these fuels where generally their nameplates will be affected and uh, and they not have any they don't have any visibility of how they're going to recover those costs so the big news is that engine has decided not to upgrade and rather to become an import terminal so that was the announcement so they'll be repurposing that site which is South Africa's oldest uh, refinery uh, into a, a, t a terminal that's able to import fuels from around the world this is very much aligned with a glut of refining capacity in the, uh, in the, in the rest of the world and with our needs uh, for our automotive industry for the new cars that we drive, the new fuels that are needed. So they'll be able to supply that. So over the next uh, few years, there will be a closure of that refinery, which we also know has had that recent fire uh, and has been, uh, also has been uh, badly affected by COVID, where uh, generally our refining capacity was closed in South Africa or or was uh, idled during that very low demand period. So that uh, the next step will be to try and uh, open this, use that same land uh, to bring in uh, imported fuel for South Africa and uh, probably to meet the quality needs of our automotive industry. Then it's a Queenie which incorporates Durban is moving to buy IPP power. Yes, so this is also done uh, in KwaZulu-Natal and we know that a number of municipalities, we've always heard uh, a lot of complaints, especially from uh, the city of Cape Town about not being able to buy power directly from independent power producers. In fact, the city took the DMRE as well as the NERSA to court around the issue. And we have now had some settlement in the form of a new uh, legislation and regulations, which does allow municipalities with, under certain conditions and if they financially have the wherewithal to enter into contracts with IPPs. No one, uh, there, there hasn't really been any um, procurement yet, but we know that, for instance, the uh, city of Cape Town is planning procurement, as well as they, uh, there's a number of Western Cape municipalities that are looking at preparing themselves for uh, direct procurement from IPPs. But here in KwaZulu-Natal, in Itzequini, which incorporates Durban, uh, they are major, they've already got an integrated resource plan of their own, they call it the Etiquini Integrated Resource Plan or ERP, and that is very ambitious in terms of not only procuring for them, their own needs and dis uh, displacing at a lower cost uh, uh, Eskom um, supply, but also they're looking at uh, a, a bigger vision of not only supplying their own needs but also exporting to other regions in KwaZulu-Natal, so they have a fairly ambitious plan. And they are now moving to implement that RP, and uh, their view is that by the middle of next year they should have their first IPP contract and they have a 12-stage program that they're going through and they're about halfway through that to get to this uh, stage where they're actually starting to buy their own uh, power directly from IPPs. Still Eskom will be a major um, supply into municipalities for many years. But you can see that this adds a whole new dimension for municipalities. Electricity revenue is very key to municipalities, and uh, they're wanting to protect that. And they see these, this procurement from IPPs as a way of ensuring that they can, one, have better visibility over their, um, their pricing, their tariffs, uh, over the 20-year period, because Eskom tariffs, as you know, have been uh, rising steeply. And, uh, but also they w there's a very big drive among cities in South Africa and around the world to decarbonize. And as part of this plan, uh, uh, Itzequini would like to be, um, have 40% of its uh, electricity from uh, renewable sources by 2030. 
and move to 100% by 2050 and be a carbon neutral city. So obviously electricity being one component of that, they have other elements that they have to decarbonize. But it's a big ambition and we see a number of South African cities are signing similar ambitions uh, that they're wanting to move in that direction. And uh, Itukuni's plan doesn't only end with electricity. They're looking at the fact that they are located at the coast uh, and uh, that South Africa has relatively better solar resources and other renewable resources to start actually maybe using that to produce green hydrogen, hydrogen for storage in their own electricity system to balance the variability of solar and wind, but also as an export, new export uh, opportunity. As we see, we import fuel at the engine refinery. We're going to be importing more and more. Uh, we will then maybe have this opportunity to start exporting uh, hydrogen or hydrogen-derived products such as green ammonia in future. There is also a new report showing that the prospects are good in South Africa for solar jobs. Yes, uh, solar industry has been developing over the last uh, 11, to, uh, 11 years, well, a bit longer than that, uh, at a utility scale because we're starting to uh, add major solar farms to South Africa's electricity system. As well as we've noticed that there's a lot of um, uh, renewable energy or solar energy being added to the rooftops, both of companies as well as households. And uh, th uh, there's been a fairly big study done by the CSIR on behalf of the solar industry to look at what is the job density of the solar industry and what, is the, what are the prospects as we implement the integrated resource plan, which includes utility scale, but also caters for uh, embedded, small scale embedded generation, that sort of rooftop solar. And what's interesting is, is obviously uh, electricity from utility farms is obviously cheaper and that's why you want these big uh, solar farms. But uh, from a jobs perspective, it's much more jobs intensive at the, the small scale level. So uh, the prospects as we implement uh, the, the RRP, both at the utility and at the small scale, are, are good for more solar jobs. There was already discovered that we have some 1,000 companies, almost 1,000 companies already active in the solar industry that's really from zero back in 2011. And uh, we, the, the jobs, um, obviously most of these are getting created in the construction of solar farms and so those come and go and therefore you need a steady pipeline uh, of projects and that's what we haven't seen in South Africa. We've had the stop start procurement at the utility scale and we're only now resuming after a seven year uh, gap uh, the procurement of new utility scale solar. But the rooftop has continued. Um, but when you have that, you have these major uh, variability in the construction jobs. But what continues to grow cumulatively are the operations and maintenance jobs. These are jobs that are, that are required both to uh, operate and maintain the rooftop fleet, which is growing, but more import importantly, or well, as importantly, the utility fleet. And that will keep growing. And ultimately, this, the study sort of shows, as we implement the RP, there will be more net jobs in renewables generally, more net jobs in solar. And the, 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 the sort of permanent jobs, the O&M jobs, will also grow than there is in coal. The issue is the, the spatial dynamic. Um, and most, most of those jobs are con coal jobs are concentrated in Pumalanga. And not all the solar uh, and wind is going to be built in that region. So the just transition is, is about managing as we lose. So we're going to be decommissioning almost 10 gigawatts of coal by 2030. As we lose those coal mine and coal power station jobs, how will the, those workers and communities be catered for? And that's the big question, because it's not going to be a like-for-like -like job. Uh, as, uh, as you uh, close a coal man, you have a solar and a wind farm that have uh, enough jobs to cater for that. So we have to have a multi-sectoral uh, remedy to that and I think we're really at the beginning stages and we see the Presidential Commission on Climate Change is now meeting finally and uh, I I that is the top of mind issue is how do we leave no one behind as we transition from a coal based economy to more of a renewables led economy. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.